In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create an Elementor header using containers. Now, I've made many videos in the past where I showed you guys how to create a header using sections. And that's probably where a lot of you guys have found my channel from. Now, this is a header that we're going to be building. It's a really simple header, but most headers are laid out this way nowadays. Now, I really love Flexbox coming from a developer background. I just feel like it comes natural to me and it makes it so much easier building websites with Elementor. In my opinion, it's a lot easier to build a website with containers than sections. The sections were never really my favorite, but I would use them because I loved using Elementor. But the whole container route is really the right direction. And I just feel like everything is built out more semantically now. Now you're going to get an inside look of how a developer would go about building an Elementor header. And I feel like that's going to be really valuable. Now this isn't some advanced video anyone can learn, no matter your experience level. I make everything super easy. I simplify the entire thing. So you're going to get a good understanding of everything. So hopefully you end up enjoying the video. If you do, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump in. Head over to your Elementor dashboard. Make sure that you have Elementor and Elementor Pro and preferably the Hello theme. Now, hover over templates and then click on Theme Builder. Now we're going to be adding a header. You can choose header, but in case you're using the old table view, you can also do it through here as well. You can click add new, and then you can choose a header and give it a name. But just to make this easier, I'm going to go ahead and use the theme builder. I honestly don't really prefer using this method, but just for this video and just to do this in a quick manner, I'm going to be using this method here doesn't really matter which method you choose as long as you create a header. So go ahead and create your header. Now we're not going to be using any of the default templates that they provide us with. Go ahead and click the plus sign and make sure we add a container row. This one here. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and adjust the settings here in a bit. But let's go back to our elements here. Let's drag and drop a container. Now let's drag and drop our logo. And I'm just going to be using the default site logo here. So I'm going to drag and drop that and I'm going to put it right over here if I can. Uh, let's see here. A little bit of a bug there. There we go. And I'm going to have the logo right there. That's perfect. And then I'm just going to shrink my logo here. Now, something that you will notice here is when you shrink the logo, it will go ahead and shrink it here, which is great. Now, don't worry about this issue here. We're going to fix that right now. But let's move it to about this size should be fine. Now, go ahead and click on your container. Make sure that it's set to the row horizontal. And then this part isn't really important right now. The justified content. What we need to do is on the align items, choose center. And that will center the logo there. Now I do want to make this logo a little bigger. So let's go ahead and this logo about this size should be fine. Oops. We're going to have to do it this way. Sometimes it bugs. Like that, there we go. Now, inside your container here, your inner container, I should say, we're going to go ahead and add our WordPress menu. Now, if you haven't created your WordPress menu, I recommend that you do. In case you don't know how to do that, let me go over that here. Go into the dashboard, go into appearance, menus, and then this is where you can add your menu items. You can just select once you create your pages, you can view all your pages and then just check mark them, click add new and you can add them in this menu here. Make sure that you give your, your menu a name. You can call it main nav or nav menu, however you would like to call it. 
and then you can go ahead and click Save Menu. Once you save the menu, go ahead and refresh this page in case you just added the, the menu there. Now, I want to add a button as well before I start to add some customizations to my menu. Let's go ahead and grab a button. It should be right here. So I'm going to drag and drop it inside this intersection that we have here. There we go. Now click on this intersection here, or sorry, inner container, and then choose row horizontal. There we go. Now that's going to put everything on one line. Let's go ahead for our justify content. We're going to go ahead and set this to the end. That's going to work. And then we'll set this to the center. Everything that lines to the center. Now we have a gap between our elements here. You can see that right here. Now we can move that, expand that, but we're going to go ahead and just, we can remove it, but I usually like to leave it just because it is always very helpful. Now something I am going to remove on the menu though. So go ahead and click on your menu, go into style, and we're going to remove the vertical padding. So just sit um, that to zero. And then do the same thing for horizontal. There we go. Now we're going to give it a space between. That's what I usually like to do instead. So you can do around 30 is fine. Now let's change the font here. I'm going to do monster it. Choose this one here. Do 500. That should be fine. I'm going to do rem. And I'm going to set this to one rem. And I'm going to make the text instead of gray, we're going to do black. That'll work there. Okay. Now we're going to do this pretty much the same thing for the button. We're going to give it the same font. Click on your button. Now I'm going to change the name of my button text here. I'm going to do book demo. We're going to go to style. On our style, I'm going to do monster as well. And we're also going to do rem. We're going to do one rem. We're going to keep it at 500. That's fine. Now we just need to change the color here. And let me grab the color that we're going to be using. I'm going to be using this blue color here. You can go ahead and use the same color as well. It's this one here. If you need to zoom in, it's fine. So the number sign, 1E37CE. E. We're going to just pad in here. And we're going to do 20 all around 20 pixels and we're going to leave the border radius as is i think that's fine now we have a nice button there we have some text our menu text there now i do want to adjust the hover effect on my menu items so click on your menu there go into content and i'm going to remove the underline pointer um what i should do is save the color that we're using. It's always super important and really helpful to do. So just click on the plus sign there. And I'm not going to give it a name. I'm just going to hit create. But I recommend always giving your colors a name. Now let's go into our menu here. Let's go into hover. Let's make this this blue color that we chose. There we go. You can see now that's set up there. Perfect. Now we're going to leave the logo as is, and it's basically set up. And it's really easy to do, as you can see. Now, let's go into a uh, tablet, make this responsive. Click on tablet. You can see that we have some issues here. First of all, um, I would like my drop down icon to be on the right side and have my button on the left. So and also we have a lot of space here. And when we click on it, it's not quite doing what we need it to do, right? Um, so click on your menu there. And then go into content. Make sure, set the tablet there. And then we set this to full width. There we go. Now if we click on it, you'll see that we have the drop down here now. 
and it takes up this entire space and it fits perfectly now. Now let's go into style. I don't necessarily like to have this uh, gray, light gray background there. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to go into the toggle button, the background color here. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to move this down just to make it transparent there. There we go. Then I'm going to adjust the size of the drop down icon. I should say the hamburger icon, they call it, right? Um, so we're going to leave it like that. That should be good there. So leave it around, uh, let's just leave it around 30. Perfect. Now it's just the drop down here. So let's choose our colors. So let's click on the drop down here. If we want to shift this a little bit horizontally, we can. Maybe we can even align it to the button if we need to. But we may just change that later on. But the most important part here is probably adjusting this here. There we go. Just just the vertical padding there. Then we're going to give it a, a hover background because currently we're using this um this dark gray there. So for the background, I'm going to choose the blue color. Oops, it should be on hover actually. So don't make that mistake there. And the way you can go about removing this is if you click on the color there, you can just click clear. And that will clear that right up there. Now we do is we go to hover here and then this is where we set it. There we go. You can see now that's set. Um, that's looking good there, right? Now, in case you want to go ahead and center this text, can I know maybe some of you guys would want to center this on the drop down? You can go into content and then go into center and you can center that there in case you wanted to do that. But I'm going to leave it as is for now. Now, something that I always like to do when it comes to my my um, header or even any of my sections, I always like to give this a padding. So go to advanced and then I like to go to set this padding. So from the top, we're probably just going to leave it at 10. That should be fine. And then for each size part, it's always important. I always like to do 15, but you can even do 10 or even 20. Now, the reason why I like to do this is let me save this and make sure when you hit save, add condition, you want to go ahead and save this for the entire site and then hit save and close. Unless you want a specific page, then you can go singular, you can go pages and you can choose your page just by searching it. But we're just going to do entire site. You can even do um, just the front page if that's something that you wanted to do. So we're going to do entire site. We're going to hit save and close. And let's hit preview here. Now, the reason why I like to do that is now if I right click and go to inspect and then minimize this. Um, and in case you don't see this and it looks like this, just click on this icon here with the, the two devices and that will give you that option there. Then now you can just toggle this down You can shrink this. And the reason why I like to add that padding here is now when we shrink it to about this side, you see that we have this padding here, right? And that's always super important. You want to definitely have that padding. But I am noticing that one side has more padding than the other. And let's try to see why. Okay, so now we can see why. It seems that this container has some padding already on it. And I usually like to remove the padding off of the containers. Um, that's just my preference there. So you can go to, you can click on the container, go to advance, and then remove that padding. There we go. Now that's looking a lot better now. Now if we hit update, now we can see that we have the same amount of padding on each side and everything's even, right? And it's looking good. Now the problem is now if I were to go to my devices here and go to tablet, I would like um, my hamburger icon to be on the right side and have my button on the left as mentioned. So what we can do is go to advance, make sure that you're on the WordPress menu element. And then here, where it says order, we're going to just want to change this to the end. There we go. And this will only apply to the tablet and also to the mobile, but we can change that if we need to. So if we go back desktop, you can see that it switches the order and then it's right where we need it to be on tablet. There we go. Now I don't like this much spacing there. So we want to adjust the gap there. So click on this container here, the inner container, go into layout, and then adjust the gap. And I'm going to do about 10. We can even do five. I think five might even be better. There we go. 
Now, if we move this, that's fine there. But something that I'm noticing is that we have a little bit of more padding on, on here, right? It's kind of gonna be a little bit uneven. So what I like to do sometimes, if we have that problem, I usually will click on my container here, my main container header, and then I will adjust the padding here. Now from the top, we can leave it the same, about 10. 10 from the top and 10 from the bottom. Now from the right side is where we're having that issue. So we might just leave that at zero for now. And let's see what we can do on the left side. So it looks like we're gonna have to do 10 there to make it at least a little bit more similar. But I wanna kinda give it a little more padding on the right as well. And I think that looks just about even. Now we can expand our bun if we need to make it bigger on tablet, we can. All we gotta do is just drag and drop this. Now, in case you're having issues with that, click on your logo here. You can also do it through here on the width, but sometimes I just do it that way because it's easier. Um, so it really just depends on your preference. Now this looks good there. Um, that looks fine. There we go. Now let's go into mobile. Now we're having this issue now, as you can see, um, where we don't have our uh, bun and our menu item, our hamburger right next to our logo. We kind of want everything on one row. So make sure that you click on your main container, go into layout, and we basically just need to do no wrap. So now we have that on the same row and that's working good. Now we are gonna have this issue here, right, where, um, we have the bun and the hamburger item on top of each other. Now what we can do, and what most would recommend is just hiding your button, right? You can click on your button here, go into advance, responsive, and just hiding it. Now that works as well. But what if for some screens, like for instance, for this size, we would like the button, you know, sometimes we do want the button, but when it comes to this size, we can just hide it. Now there isn't really a way to do that right now with Elementor. I know there are those custom breakpoints, but that adds breakpoints to pretty much all of your pages. And it's just some extra CSS that we don't really need. So especially if we're just applying it to one item, right? So we can do it individually, which is some custom CSS. But first let's get the right sizing for that. So we know when to um, hide the button. So as we can see, Everything's looking good. One thing I want to do though, is I want to shrink my logo a little bit. So I'm gonna shrink my logo a little bit. And what we can even do as well is even shrink our bun, right? We can adjust the tag. So click on your bun, go into style, and we can adjust this. And maybe we can do 0.8 for the text now, right? And then we can go into our padding here, right? So for the height, we can maybe do 15 and then do 15 from the top, right? Um, and then maybe on each side, we can do 10 just in case. Uh, maybe we can also do 15. 15 there and 15 there, that should be fine, right? All right, and that's looking good. We don't really need to add any padding to the right, to the container here, the main header container, because if we go to advanced, we can see that there's already some padding in here. And that looks fine, um, but you can adjust the padding on each side. So for the right and then left, you can adjust that. But I think that's looking good. You can even adjust the top padding of the container if that's something that you wanted to do. But I'm gonna leave it as is. So we're gonna hit update here. And then now, if we go ahead and bring this a little bit closer, we can see that right here. Now, most of the time, most screens are not gonna be that small, but they could be potentially, right? Um, so I wanna go ahead and just start removing this just to make, make it easier. Let's do 300. We can, or you know what? We can do 298, we'll remove the bun, right? So click on your bun, go to advance, go to custom CSS. Now, one of the things I do wanna try, I already know how to do this just by adding a media query and then hiding my, uh, my, uh, my selector but just to make this easy, why don't we ask the AI, right? That would be interesting. So let's go ahead and add ask our AI. Make sure you get that enabled, of course, with Elementor. Now we can see that 298. Okay, so we can ask the AI, 
hide this button at green size 298 290 98 we can even uh, give it pixels hide this button at screen size 298 that should be pretty self-explanatory let's see if it generates the code properly for us should just be a simple media query with the selector and there we go uh well it didn't this i wouldn't really need to use that isn't really that important and it did it kind of did it right this does work as well except i wouldn't probably do media screens because i don't want it to work on any other screen i just want it to work on this size but it got most of it so let's just insert this so we're not going to need this because obviously uh we're not going to need this that's not going to work this isn't going to work um we can remove that and then we can go ahead and remove this code this uh class here and then just have it like this this will work now we can hit update as we can see that works perfectly there we go right and that's all set as a little bonus let me show you how to make this into a sticky header one thing you want to do when you're starting to make it sticky you want to give it a background so go ahead and click on your header container that we have there go to style go to background here and give it a white background there we go um, so coming soon we're going to be able to generate images that is going to be amazing i really want to see that i think that's what it means right or is it a color no i'm pretty sure it means um that it's going to be able to generate images that's awesome all right so let's go into advance go into motion effects and let's make this sticky from the top we're just going to update this just make sure that it's sticky and real quick, I'm going to probably just try to go to one of my home pages. There we go. We can see the header is working perfectly. Now that's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did get something out of it, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Thanks for watching.